All right, so before we, uh, before we get into the content of the call tonight, I just wanna raise the vibration a little bit. I know things have been a little bit heavy in Europe lately. I know, I get it, I've been paying attention. In different countries in Europe, things have been a little bit heavy. So uh, gratitude, by the way, and this is, this is science. There's been a ton of data on this. Gratitude has the ability to increase our overall mood. It can alleviate stress. Uh, it can help us to feel joy. So gratitude is an amazing way just to raise whatever kind of state you're currently in. And your expression of gratitude has the ability to raise the state of other people. So what I love is just, we're gonna get into some training tonight. Don't worry, but I just kind of wanna raise it up a little bit. Just type one or two things in the chat box that you're grateful for right now. Just one or two things in the chat box that you're grateful for right now. Hop in the chat box. There's a lot of people on the call. Just type in there. What's uh, What are you grateful for right now? Let's see. Thomas said he's grateful for himself. That's actually pretty amazing. Not enough people express gratitude for themselves. So actually, Thomas, shout out to you. And just so you all know, Thomas is Michelle's uh, youngest of two boys. Uh, but health and friends, grateful that your kids are asleep, your health, wonderful. Uh, good for Thomas. That's amazing. A lot of people leave themselves off of their gratitude list. So I think that's fantastic. Uh, grateful for Roger, of course. Grateful to be in Spain, says Essie, that you had great weather today. Congratulations on your one day of great weather out there. Um, <laughs> all of the Christmas adverts on TV. So you're just feeling the season. You love seeing all of that. So grateful for that. Wonderful. Grateful for the clubhouse, feeling happy and healthy, growing friendships in the team. That's really one of the best parts of what we do. Also, shout out, Caroline. I saw you presenting at the, at the event today. So congratulations on that. Great job. Uh, what else? Had a lovely day with your friends. That's always nice. Anything else? What else are you grateful for? One or two things. Your bonus kids uh, for Eden and myself into this community. Thank you. We feel the same, of course. Uh, your family and your kids. What else? What are some things that you're grateful for in this moment right now? What are some other things? And if you already put something, you put something else. And here's the interesting thing that we don't spend enough time on. We don't spend enough time on what I like to call rational gratitude. The things that we take for granted, there's one of those. Thank you, Lisana, right? A warm home, socks on your feet, socks on your feet to keep your feet warm. How many of us take for granted something so simple as socks on our feet or a blanket to wrap ourselves in? You know, we live in a city now where, uh, where there's a lot of there's a lot of people that experience homelessness here. There's a lot of people experiencing homelessness, and so as the weather gets cold, I drive by all the time and I see just tents of people, people sleeping on on the street with 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 no warmth, no blankets, no bed, no pillow, and sometimes we forget just those little things, right? I mean, gratitude for having a device. Think about this for a moment, whether you're on a computer right now or on your mobile. Gratitude for having access to technology that can connect you to people all around the world and put you in a position to earn money as well. Gratitude for that, right? Gratitude for uh, gratitude for eyesight, to be able to hear, to be able to breathe, to be able to smell, to be able to taste, to be able to eat food, right? Gratitude for being able to stay home with your daughter. Gratitude for the compensation plan, right? Like there's so much that we forget to be grateful for. For those of you that wear glasses, gratitude for gratitude for technology that allows you to see more clearly because your eyes aren't as effective without glasses on, right? Glad, gratitude for headphones so you can listen, listen more clearly and be focused. How many of you drop a one in the chat box? Don't take enough time to just express kind of rational gratitude, just some of the most basic things of life. One of the things I write, I, I write in a gratitude journal every morning and every night. And one of the things I, I write Sometimes as I'm just grateful for, for a good night's sleep, just grateful that I good, got a good night's sleep because a lot of people don't have that experience, right? Gratitude for social media, to be able to have a global business from home. Sometimes we don't stop and just say thank you for everything that we have. And what I've learned is that when we appreciate what we have, what we have appreciates. When we appreciate what we have, what we have appreciates. And so another way of saying that, if it doesn't translate perfectly, is when we're grateful for what we have, whatever it is that we're grateful for, it grows. When we're grateful for what we have, what we're grateful for, it grows. So again, I just want to invite you to incorporate just a small piece of that every single day into your practice, into your life. It takes five minutes to express gratitude. You can write it down, but ultimately, the greatest expression of gratitude, believe it or not, is gratitude is expressed through action. Gratitude is expressed through action. What does that mean? Well, I'm so grateful for, for the opportunity to build a, build a business on social media. 
Are you actually using social media every single day to build your business? I'm so grateful for the products of Isogenics. Are you actually using the products every single day? An expression of gratitude. And then you're always rewarded for those things. So um, here's something I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for um, brainstorming. I'm grateful for masterminding. We had an incredible uh, global executive leadership call earlier this afternoon for the executives on the team. For those of you that are not aware, once you reach executive, we have once in a while, we have private calls for just the executives and above. It's special training. Uh, today, we got to hear some new stories, things that are working. It was really powerful, um, both from leaders from the US and of course in uh, UK and Europe. So I'd really encourage you to get to exec. Yes, because of the money that's on the table, but also because of that brainstorming. And so one of the things we asked was, what was what would you like for us to train on uh, this evening? And the thing that came back, and I was surprised to see it, but I was happy to see it, was a suggestion of training on one of my favorite trainings. And that's putting yourself in a position to connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime, no matter their background. How many of you would like the ability to connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime, and in that connection process, identify the ability to qualify whether or not they're the type of person that you're looking to partner with when it comes to building your isogenics business. How many of you could get excited about that? Drop a two in the chat box. So again, just to clarify, the ability to connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime, any background, and simultaneously qualify whether or not they'd be a good fit for your business. Okay, cool. So this training, for those of you that have been around before, it's going to sound familiar. You've heard me train on it before, but ultimately at the end of the day, we repeat the basics over and over and over again, because, because repetition is the mother of all skills. Repetition is the mother of all skills. And what's cool about skills is any skill can be learned because how many of you drop a three in the chat box? How many of you sometimes feel like maybe you're out at a cafe or you're, 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 you're shopping or, or maybe even at a friend's house and you, you're looking at them and you think, God, they'd be an amazing person. I would love to connect with them. I just don't know what to say or how do I start that conversation or what does that sound like? And how do I do it without sounding like a weirdo, right? Like, how do I, how do, I do that? How do I connect with someone? Because um, it can be a very, um, it can be overwhelming at first. It can be daunting at first. It can be intimidating at first. And what I know for sure, though, is that when we build skill, when we build competence, we become a little bit more confident. But first, we have to have the courage to take that action. And so I'm going to teach you a formula, a very simple formula, that by the time we're done here tonight, you should feel confident in going out tomorrow and trying this. It's that simple. And what if I told you that this little conversation, just this little ability to have this little conversation has made me millions and millions of euros? Would that be a value to you? Drop a four in the chat box. This one little conversation, just this tiny little conversation has made me millions and millions of euros throughout my entire career since the time I was about 23 or 24 years old, because that's when it was first taught to me. Okay. It's very, very simple. It's very, very simple. It's a beautiful, beautiful formula. It would work in any language, any city, any culture, doesn't matter. It's always going to be effective because it's based on very, very specific principles. And I've done it in every country I've ever been to. Okay, so there's no language barrier with this. There's no cultural barriers with this. You can do it over a cup of coffee. You could do it over a pint. You could do it over a cup of tea, whatever it is that you're going to do it over. You could do it while you're shopping again, like I said. So this, this formula is called, anybody know? Everybody, some people know, it's called past, present, future. It's called past, present, future. And ladies and gentlemen, and everyone on the call, it's my bread and butter. And it's one of my favorite things to talk. It's my favorite thing to do. So here's what it looks like. The very first step is when I leave my house or even when I get online, I have on, and you've heard me talk about this before, my prospecting consciousness hat, right? Just go like this. You guys have seen me do this before. Does everybody do it with me? Put on the prospecting consciousness hat. And what does that mean? It means I'm opening up myself to the awareness, right? I'm opening myself up to the awareness of people who might be in my sphere that might be great for me to connect with. 
They demonstrate certain characteristics. They have a positive attitude. They're smiling. They're, they're taking an interest in me. They're making eye contact. They are offering excellent customer service if we're in a hotel or a restaurant. They just are exuding that positive energy. You, how many of you have had that experience? Drop a five in the chat box where you walk in and you see someone and you go, I don't know who that person is or what they're all about, but mm, God, they just have this yummy, just delicious energy about them. There's this light about them. And I'd, I'd love to get to know them. I just don't know how to start that conversation. Okay. So that's the first step is to put on our prospect and consciousness at to be aware of opening ourselves up to seeing those kinds of people in our world. And here's the reality. You come across, especially on social media, thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single day. And in the real world, you walk by thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single day. And believe it or not, every single day, there are, there are tons of people walking right by you who are probably incredible human beings, who you would love to be friends with, who would make excellent business partners, and potentially blow up your business in the most amazing ways possible. However, when our prospect and consciousness is not turned on, and our focus is on everything else that's going on in the world, and we're stuck on social, we're just scrolling and scrolling and we're out and we're walking through the train station and we're scrolling and we're scrolling and blah 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 and then we're bumping into people and we might have bumped into a person that could make a million dollars in the next five years of nice and gents but we wouldn't know because we're too busy scrolling and scrolling and scrolling so we've got to open ourselves up to the awareness of everybody that's out there and so as you do this one of the things i want you to keep in mind is from now on when you go out just put your phone away now you'll look like a psychopath because you'll be the only person not on your phone but it's worth it because there are so many people walking around right now looking, asking, praying, seeking out a solution that you have access to. Okay, so the very first thing, like I said, prospect and consciousness, becoming aware of what's in your surrounding environment. Number two, identify the person, identify the person and be willing to pay them a very sincere compliment. Be ready to pay them a sincere compliment. And that's how you start the conversation. You start the conversation with a sincere compliment. Now, one of my favorite examples, because it's the easiest way to practice, is servers in a restaurant or in a cafe. It's one of my favorite ways to practice. So I might come across a server who has incredible attitude, really kind, really funny, really smart, very engaged. And I might say, as a very, very kind compliment, very real compliment, Gosh, I have to tell you, I eat in restaurants all the time. Obviously, I've had thousands of people, you know, serve me in different environments. And I just have to tell you that you have one of the best attitudes of any server I've ever come across before. Or you have incredible charisma. Has anyone ever told you that you have a really remarkable, dynamic personality? Has anyone ever told you that before? Now, what do you think that's going to do for the person? What if someone said that to you? What if someone said to you, hey, I, this might sound strange and I know that I'm just a, a guest here, but like, I just have to tell you that you just have this incredible energy about you. It's really been wonderful sitting at your table. They're gonna feel amazing. That's right, they're gonna feel uplifted. Now we compliment kids all the time. Great job, way to go. You did amazing, you're so good at this. But we don't do it with adults and why? I don't know. It's weird. But I love complimenting people. I love finding something that I can genuinely connect with or compliment. Now, I might also use my common interests as a way to connect. So for example, if I see someone else wearing this hat, and this is a Dodgers hat, American baseball, right? If I see someone else wearing a Dodgers hat, I'm going to make a compliment, com comment real simple. Yo, go Dodgers. Go Dodgers. Simple. Or if I see one of the one of the rivals, right? So like, let's say uh, let's say you're a fan of uh, of FC Ghent, and you see someone wearing a you know a, 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 an IX an IX kit or a, or or or, or a Bruja shirt, right? Like you'd say something, you make a little joke about it, right? Just a little joke, just a little comment, just to start a conversation. 
So step one again is, or step one again, prospecting consciousness. Now we're in the environment, right? I've identified that this person has some of the attributes, great characteristics, great energy. I'm going to pay them a sincere compliment. So going back to the server example, again, gosh, you just have amazing energy. It's been really lovely sitting at your table. Thank you so much. You're really great at your job. Wow. Thank you so much. That's really kind of you to say. So curiously, curiously, and here we go, past, present, future. How long have you worked here? Past. So write that down. How long have you worked here? Past. That's a past question. How long have you worked here? Oh, well, I've been doing this for, uh, you know, almost two years now, whatever it is. Oh, wow. Two years. You must really enjoy it. Present. So you repeat back how long they've been doing it. And then you say, wow, you must really enjoy it. Two years, five years. Now what happens, maybe sometimes I say, oh, well, I've been working here for six months. Oh, cool, Have you? is this your first time working as a server? Oh no, I've been a server for like the last five years. And exactly, and this whole same approach, thank you, Michelle, works online just as effectively. It's just as effective online, okay? Cool. So how long have you how long have you been a server? I've been here. I've worked here for two years. Wow, two years. You must really enjoy it. Present. Present reality. Now, what are they going to say? And here comes the qualification part. Remember, I said you can qualify people in this process. So, wow, you must really enjoy it. You just go quiet. And they say one of any couple of things. What might be some of the things that they say? Type in the chat box. What, what might be some of the things that they say in response to that? Yeah, it pays the bills. What else? It's okay. It's a job. Yeah. What else? I love it. That's a possibility. No, it's not my dream job. Okay. Pays the bills. It's okay. Keeps the lights on. Provides food for my family. I hate it. Right. All of these are possibilities. Now, most cases, people are going to say something along the lines of you have too many hours working or something along the lines of like, yeah, it's okay. It's a job. It pays the bills. I do what I got to do. And you're just paying attention to see if they really, uh, if they, if they're really happy or not. But most people don't like what they do for a living. And how do we know that? We just look at the data national, internationally. We look at all the data. Most people hate their jobs. It's an unfortunate reality. Most people do not love what they do. So here comes the power of the next question. And the question is a future-based question, okay? So you go, wow, two years, you must really enjoy it. Five years, you must really enjoy it, whatever it is. They say, it's okay, it's a job, whatever it is. Then you go like this, you go, well, so can you see yourself working here? Now watch my facial expression and watch my body language because this part's really important. You can't do this part online, but this is where like the real juice is, okay? So like, can you see yourself working here for like another like 15, 10 to 15 years? See, so, you know, I just create that little pain in my face and I shrug my shoulders and it's like, oh, God, like, can you see yourself doing this for another like five to 10 years? Right? You got to create that. Like everybody practice, but oh, practice like, oh, can you just everyone practice that together? The shoulder shrug, you got a shoulder shrug. Your back. God, can you see yourself? Oh God, can you see yourself doing it for another five or 10 years? And if you're laughing at me because I'm like super American doing this, don't worry. It would work as American as ever. If I came to Amsterdam or Belgium right now, it would work. And same thing with the UK. Now, one of the Brits might break a bottle over my head, but then they would still answer the question after the fact, just to be clear. <laughs> so can you see yourself working here for like another five to 10 years? And what the facial expression is, is you feeling their pain. You're feeling their pain. Now, what are most people going to say? Oh, God, I, I, I hope not. Like, oh, geez, no, man, uh, please, for the love of God, whatever happens, I, I definitely don't want to be here for another five or 10 years future. And then there's another future-based question. So really, the formula is past, present, future, future. And the next question is very simple. What would you rather be doing? What, what would you rather be doing? If you don't want to be here, what would you be rather be doing? Now, just type a six in the chat box. How many of you would agree that's a very natural question? If someone tells you something they don't like, very natural question is, well, what would you rather be doing? What would you like to be doing instead? What would you rather be doing? What would you want to be doing instead? And here's where the answers come. God, you know, I've always wanted to own my own business. I've always wanted to be able to travel more. I wish I could work online. 
I see so many people that work from all the beaches and things like that. And I wish I could do that. I'd love to put myself in a position to get out of debt, but this job just doesn't pay me enough. I hate missing everything that my kids go do for the very first time. Right? I just, I, I, I hate it. I hate spending all my time away from my partner. I wish we could be together more often. And they're going to tell you their deep desires. Now here comes the magic because we've opened them up. And now here comes the magic. And it's important because this is true. You say, you know, I don't know whether or not it'd be for you. I don't know whether or not it would be for you, but you could be potentially, listen to my language, you could be potentially, not you would be, you could be potentially amazing at what, at what my wife and I do or what my partners and I do. You could potentially be amazing at what we do. Now, why am I saying could be and potentially? Because I have no idea, ultimately. We all know that, right? We all know that some people come in, think they could be amazing, they never do anything. Some people come in, you would never know it. Next thing you know, they're rank advancing through the tree and it's unbelievable. You just never really know. And we also don't want to create any guarantees whatsoever from all of our conversations. We always want to paint a very realistic conversation that at the end of the day, this is a business and it's going to take work, right? Like I'm not going to go, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like I'm going to hire Michael to, you know, to coach me for a fitness competition. He's going to be like, okay, this is going to be the easiest thing you've ever done before. All you have to do is sit on the couch all day, eat ice cream and cotton candy, and you're going to win first place. Never going to happen, right? Never. He's going to be a psychopath and he's going to drive you until you die or go on stage and win first place. There is no in between, right? Okay. So we want to create a realistic understanding of the approach to business. You could potentially be amazing at what I do. Now, what do you think they're going to ask when I say that? Because I'm just saying you could be potentially amazing at what I do. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, well, what do you do? What do you do? And then you say this, it's really funny you should ask. It's really funny you should ask. This might be your lucky day. This might be your lucky day. I show overworked servers just like you how to build a part-time business online in the wellness space so that eventually, eventually with hard work and time and effort, they can add an additional income stream into their households that puts them in a position to potentially spend more time with their kids, spend more time with their partners, have the business that they've always wanted to have, work from different countries if that's what they desire. And you just fill in, notice what I'm doing, I'm just filling in one of the potential things that they'd said that they want to be doing instead. And then I just ask a very simple question. Does that sound like something you'd be open to learning more about? Now, what do you think they're going to say a hundred times out of a hundred to that question? When I've perfectly tailored what I do to what they've shared with me, what do you think a hundred percent of the time, what do you think their answer is going to be when I say, does that sound like something you'd be open to learning more about? They're going to say a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time, they're going to say, yes, I would love, what, what is it? How does it work? Now, Isabel, are you asking me for to repeat for me to repeat what it was that I just said? Okay. So they're going to say, what do you do? What do you do? I'm going to say, it's really funny you should ask. It's really funny you should ask. We show people, we show servers, we show attorneys, we show dietitians, we show nutritionists, we show personal trainers, we show salon owners, whatever it is, right? Whoever you're talking to, how to blank. So we show them how to, we show servers, how to build a, how to build a part-time online business in the wellness space so that they can eventually be in a position to, and then fill in the blank of the things that they said they might want to be doing instead. Does that sound like something you'd be open to learning more about? Yes, absolutely. Please. How does it work? Can you tell me now here comes Something called posture, that's very important. You know what? I would love nothing more than to tell you everything about it. But now isn't the time or place. You're obviously busy working. 
I'm just out having a coffee with my, with my wife or with my friend here right now. Well, why don't we do this? What I would love to do is I'd love to connect with you. Are, on, are you on Facebook or Instagram? Which do you prefer? Here, go ahead and find yourself. And I just give them, their, give them my phone. Boom. Here, find yourself. Great, that's you. Oh God, I love your dog. What's their name? Right, just just little connection things, little things. Oh my God, that's great. Oh, what a great, oh, cool. I didn't realize you were into football and into sport. Cool, right? Whatever. Okay, great. So we're gonna finish here. Again, you've been amazing. It's been really wonderful. And I'll be in touch within the next 24 to 48 hours so we can discuss um, the next steps if you if you feel like you'd like to learn more. How does that sound? Does that sound fair? Sounds great. And now what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna follow up. Hey, Jacqueline. Again, it was so nice connecting with you yesterday. Um, I just tell me a little bit more about your life. And now we go right back into some of the templates and some of the and some of the scripts about how this works that are all built into the system. Now, how long do you think that whole conversation that I just did for you takes? How long do you think it takes? What, was, what would be your guess? Just type in the chat box. Mikey says 10 minutes. Deb says, Deb says 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes, not long, three minutes, okay. The better you get, the faster it is. The better you get, the faster it is. And the faster you can do it, the more effective you are. And the reason the faster you do it, the more effective you are is because the energy that you're then communicating to the person that you're speaking with is an energy where they feel like, oh, wow, this, this person really knows what they're doing. Like they, they're, they're serious. They're confident. They're, they're, they, they, they knew what they were saying. They, those are great questions. Like, I, I don't know what just happened, but that felt really good. The only intention of past, present, future, to be very clear, the only intention is to identify if they have the personality and the drive and the hunger that you're looking for and to get them to agree to connecting on social media so you can follow up and give them more information. That's it. The big mistake that people make is they do past, present, future, and then they go, do you have any health goals? Do you use collagen? Do you wanna know about our ingredients? Here, look, do you have a piece of paper? Let me show you the comp plan right now. Do you know who Jim and Kathy Kubi are? Do you know, <laughs> and they do this whole presentation and now it's gone. The only thing that you're doing with past, present, future, all you're doing is piquing someone's curiosity and getting them to say yes to the very simple step, again, of connecting online and wanting to take a look at more information. Now, how many of you, drop a seven in the chat box, how many of you feel like you can do that, that we just went through? Again, past, present, future. Just drop a seven in the chat box. Okay, cool. Now, the real gift of past, present, future, the real gift, Mikey and Kelly, stop passing notes. Stop talking in class. Um, the real gift and the amazing aspect of past, present, and future, and this is where I want you guys to, to really put the work in on this, is you got to be genuinely interested in people. You can't go about it with the idea of like, oh, I'm going to recruit this person into my business. It's not about that. It's I. There is really something about this person that I genuinely do want to learn more about. There is something about them that seems interesting to me. There's something about them where I, I, I just like their energy. I just kind of want to be in their field. I, I'm, I'm, I want to allow them into my field for right now. That's really got to be the root of it. The foundation cannot be greed. If the foundation is greed, they will go. If the foundation is service, they will grow. If the foundation is greed, they will go. If the foundation is service, they will grow. Now, what's a cool opportunity again is you come across people every single day. So start practicing past, present, future with everyone you meet, including people who you feel like might not be good candidates. Because guess what? I practice all the time. I come across servers who have terrible attitudes. They just don't wanna be there. They're depressed, they're sad, they don't like their jobs. And guess what? I still ask them, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Not great, uh, how long you worked here? Oh, like a year and a half. God, that's, yeah. Do you enjoy it? No, not at all. I hate it. What would you rather do? It? I don't know. Whatever, man. I don't really care about it. Cool. No worries. That's it. I'm not worried about it. But I'm still going to have the conversation. I'm still going to practice. And the reason I practice over and over and over again is because in the beginning, guess what? You might sound a little silly. Oh, wait, which question was I supposed to ask? Him? Right? And it's okay. 
But the reason you practice is so that when you come across people that really are who you're looking for, smooth, so smooth. And you'll be like, damn, that was, that was, that was pretty, I mean, what, it was like Zach took over my body and took over, how did that happen? Whoa, shoot. And that's what you want. You want to be unconscious. I want to be able to wake you up in the middle of the night at three in the morning and say, go outside and do past, present, future and get a number. And you can, no problem, boom, done. Stumbling around. Hey, how long have you been a street sweeper? How long have you been cleaning the streets? Oh well, God, you. I wanna be able to wake you up in the middle of the night. I wanna be able to be at dinner with all of you when I come next time and say, hey, try it, past, present, future, do it. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, if you're willing to do that over and over and over and over, you'll become a master networker. You'll become a master networker. And here's the other side of it. Doors will open to you that have nothing to do with isogenics. You will meet incredible people this way. Why? Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, which was originally said by uh, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Great book recommendation. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And how do we express that we care? By genuinely asking, just wanting to learn about people. So I've kept you five minutes over. Thank you for staying with me. We'll get the recording up as soon as, as, soon as we can. Have a great evening. Thank you for all that you do. I hope this was valuable for you. I'm gonna post in both pages again, what did you learn? I don't do that for my benefit. I do it for yours. Lots of love. Have a phenomenal, phenomenal week and we'll talk soon. Thank you, Bye.